In this lesson, we're going to have a look at fluid power systems like hydraulics and pneumatics. Fluid power works a little differently than mechanical power transmission in which moving parts transfer energy to other moving parts to do work or electrical power in which voltage and current is used to do work. Fluid power is the use of a fluid, a liquid or a gas, to transmit power from one location to another. Hydraulics is the use of a liquid flowing under pressure to transmit power from one location to another. Pneumatics is the use of a gas flowing under pressure to transmit power from one location to another. And as we'll find out later, hydraulics and pneumatics have a lot in common. But they also have quite a few differences that make them ideal for different design situations. With many different power systems out there, why use fluid power? It has some interesting perks. Fluid power systems enable you to multiply a force, gaining more force on the output than is provided on the input. Many operations can be powered by a single power source. A workshop might have one air compressor that provides pneumatic power to many tools and machines spaced far apart. A machine might have a single hydraulic pump that powers many different operations. Not only can fluid power systems provide large amounts of power, but they're able to do this using equipment that's relatively low weight compared with, say, electrical batteries or motors. The ratio of power to weight is highly favorable. Electrical power systems typically need to operate at very high speeds and use gearing to produce high torque. But fluid power systems can produce high torque at relatively low speeds, which can be advantageous in certain situations, like when high speeds might cause troublesome vibration. The force or torque generated by a fluid power system is constant and consistent. And fluid power systems are safe to use in hazardous environments. An example would be a chemical-rich atmosphere, like that inside of a paint booth, where sparks created by electric motors could cause an explosion. Fluid power is inherently spark-free, which is part of the reason that pneumatics are used to power a lot of paint sprayers. The applications for fluid power are practically endless. It's crucial on any construction site. Heavy equipment like this backhoe is controlled using hydraulic power. Other tools, like this nail gun, are pneumatic and are powered by compressed air. Fluid power systems are also widely used in manufacturing to control production equipment. Robotic arms, like this one, might have all of their joints controlled by pneumatics. The animation on the left shows a piece of equipment that uses an air-powered safety guard to prevent flying debris. A pneumatic piston causes the shield to go up or down as needed. In transportation, fluid power systems are used to control braking in cars, trucks, and even mountain bikes. The animation on the right shows us what will happen when you press on the brake pedal in a car. The pedal pushes on a piston, which pushes hydraulic fluid through tubes to the brake caliper pistons. The fluid pushes the pistons out, where they cause the brake pads to pinch on the spinning brake rotors, slowing the car down. When the brake pedal is released, a spring pushes the master cylinder back, retracting the caliper pistons and ending the braking. The principle is the same on high-end mountain bikes, except that the fluid is pushed using levers on the handlebars instead of a pedal. In a vehicle's suspension, cylinders of air can be used like springs to cushion the ride. The basic physics of fluid power centers around the concept of work. Work is done whenever a force is used to move something a distance. Let's see an example. How much work is completed by moving a 1,000 pound object two feet? Force times distance equals the amount of work. In this case, 1,000 pounds of force times two feet of distance equals 2,000 foot pounds of work. Power adds the component of time. It's the rate at which work is done. Basically, you're doing the same amount of work if you walk up a flight of stairs as if you run. The difference is that when you run, you're doing the work in less time, so you're using more power. Power is represented by the capital letter P and is equal to work over time. How many units of power are needed to lift a 1,000 pound force two feet in two seconds? 
as we calculated on the last slide, 1,000 pounds times 2 feet equals 2,000 foot-pounds of work. Divided by 2 seconds, we get 1,000 units of power. In hydraulics, power equals the rate of flow, Q, multiplied by the pressure, which is lowercase italic letter P. If this sounds familiar, think back to when we learned about electricity. We talked about electrical power, measured in watts, being equal to the current or the flow of electricity in amps, multiplied by the voltage or pressure of the electricity in volts. This relationship of flow times pressure is exactly what we see in hydraulic power. In the US customary system, the most common unit for measuring fluid power is horsepower. One horsepower is equal to 1,714 gallons per minute, a measurement of flow, times one pound per square inch, or PSI, which is a measurement of pressure. According to this ratio, we can determine the amount of horsepower in a system by multiplying the flow in gallons per minute by the pressure in PSI and dividing by the horsepower constant, 1,714. Let's see an example. What is the power output of the system below if it can lift a 10,000 pound object one foot in three seconds? Power is equal to work over time, and work can be expanded into force times distance. 10,000 pounds of force times one foot of distance divided by three seconds gives us 3,333 foot-pounds per second of power. This unit can be converted into horsepower if we know how many foot-pounds per second equals one horsepower. One horsepower equals 550 foot-pounds per second. So if we multiply our answer in foot-pounds per second by this conversion factor, we get 3,333 horsepower divided by 550, or 6.06 .06 output horsepower. What is the efficiency of the system if the pump moves 10 gallons per minute of fluid at 1500 PSI? To find the efficiency of the system, we have to compare the output power with the input power. The input power can be calculated using the rate of flow, 10 gallons per minute, and the pressure, 1500 PSI. 10 times 1500 divided by the horsepower constant, 1714, equals 8.75 horsepower supplied by the input. The percent efficiency can be found by dividing the output power by the input power and multiplying the result by 100. 6.06 .06 horsepower divided by 8.75 horsepower times 100 equals an efficiency of about 69%. 69% of the power supplied by the pump was actually converted into useful power at the output. So what happened to the rest? The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change form. In hydraulics, energy not transferred into useful work output takes the form of heat energy. When the fluid is pressurized, its temperature rises. This can cause the fluid to become less viscous and changes the way it behaves in the hydraulic system. For this reason, many hydraulic systems contain heaters or coolers to control the temperature of the fluid and keep it operating properly. In part two of this lesson, we'll take a closer look at hydraulics and find out more about what makes them work.